South Cheshire College and MMU this week. Obviously, you've been uh, filming and editing with the students. Yeah. Um, can you just tell us a bit about your role with the, the British Youth Film Academy? Because you've obviously now um, appeared in some of the films, starred in some of the films, but you're obviously involved with the editing side of it this week. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I mean, to answer your question, I've been with the BYFA since about 2005. I appeared in um, The Treasure of Albion. And then I did a film a year later called The School Abroad, and um, Andrew Walkinson, the, the, the head honcho, the big chief, asked me would I like to direct my first film. So I cut my teeth and did some guest directing on The School Abroad in this very office. Yeah. And um, we met up in Crewe when I was doing a play a couple of years back, maybe about 18 months back, and he said, would you like to direct your first feature? And the name of the film is The Perfect Burger, which I've now shot, and I'm now in the editing process here at MMU and uh, South Cheshire College, and it's been fantastic. Great. What does the, the Perfect Burger, what's the film all about? Well, it's a comedy horror, I believe, I think. I think that's the best way I can, I can describe it. That's what I'm trying to achieve, anyway. But I suppose it's a play on, on um, Sweeney Todd. If you go back a couple of hundred years ago, what did Sweeney Todd put into his pies? Bring it back again, 200 years. What goes into the burgers instead of, instead of pies? So. Um, there'll be some missing school children that uh, we might be munching on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously you've, you've had um, student involvement from a number of colleges in the North West and, and Midlands and obviously there's, there's been foundation degree students from South Cheshire College involved with, with the filming process and the editing. Uh, have you been impressed with the standard for both sort of acting and the, and the sort of editing side from students because obviously they, they're just obviously getting a grip in the, in the film world really aren't they? Absolutely so and I mean this is the great thing about the BYFA is that you'll get a chance that you might have to wait 10 or 15 years to break into this business which is very hard you know business to, to break into it's over subscribed as it is so it's one of, what, what strikes me more as, as well as the, um, the attitude is the enthusiasm that you know most of the students have to do and you see in their faces when they're uncertain you know, you know making a movie, making a movie, and it's exactly the same as it is in the real world, except that th this is where you can learn from your mistakes, and you can, you know, you know cut, cut your teeth. Uh, have, you, have you been giving them some sort of tips as you've gone along? I mean, obviously you, you're a seasoned actor yourself, so have they sort of benefited, do you think, from your advice and help along the way? Well, I think we've benefited from, from each other, really. I mean, when I was doing, doing my acting, I was obviously working with guys who've, ne who've never worked professionally or never been in front of a camera, so... Um, you find that once you once you get a few takes under your belt and you, you rehearse for a couple of weeks and you know it all sort of blends into one. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you, you've had a, a distinguished acting career yourself. You, you've worked with some very uh, uh, big names, really, with obviously EastEnders, The Bill. Um, who, who would you say has been perhaps your role model in the, in the film and uh, TV industry? Oh God, those. I mean, I used to love Jimmy Cadney, Clint Eastwood, the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy. And um, what I did though, I was always a fan of films, so a long time ago there used to be a thing called Saturday Morning Pictures, and it cost sixpence to get in, and I used to go with my mum. And I was always very influenced by you know, the big stars on screen, and in fact, I think I saw a scene once where this little boy was crying, his dog had died or his frog had died or something like that, yeah. or his budgie blew up. Right. And um, I got upset about it, and my mum said, what are, you getting, what are you getting upset about? I said, there's a boy there, he says, don't worry, he's an actor. I went, what, what did you say, Mark? I said, he's an actor. And I went, what's an actor? The rest is history. Yes, yeah, she, you know, yeah, she brought yeah. me to a Saturday morning uh, drama class which had an agency attached to it, and that's how I started. Great. Is there a sort of key memory from, from um, any sort of that you role as obviously Mark Fowler in EastEnders or Tucker in Grange Hill that sort of stands out? I would have to say my favourite times were when I was a, a child actor doing Tucker Jenkins because it was a, a great part, an iconic part. Everyone sort of wanted to be him, and the girls wanted to be with him, which was lo lovely for me. And also, most importantly of all, I had my own hair and teeth back then. <laughs> right, no problem. Obviously, uh, more recently, you've been in, in Dancing uh, dancing on Ice. Um, <laughs> have you been practising? I know that was, it was quite a good uh, laugh. Yeah. Did you enjoy doing that and taking part? Oh, I love doing it. It's just yeah. I just didn't, couldn't do it very well. Right. Uh, <laughs> and when I first started, I was very nervous. I mean, that ice is pretty, pretty, pretty hard stuff, you know, but um, I got through and there was that, obviously that infam infamous moment when I went off the stage and I thought I'd never see my wife and children again. <laughs> but somehow there were, you know, four or five 16 stone burly blokes who picked me up and shoved me back on the ice. That's why I, 
was a little bit wobbly when I went came out, but it was a great experience and uh, I've been skating around the world since. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, just what are your, your future plans now, Todd? Because obviously you've been involved with the, the BYFA for some time. Yeah. Do you plan to continue sort of helping students with, with um, in the BYFA? Um, have you got plans to sort of direct films in the future? And what, what, what's oh, yeah. the next steps? Oh, the, the next step is to do some, some more directing and, and, and some more acting. And, and I, I have a production company with my wife, so we'll be now looking for, you know, the film is only as good as a script, really. So yeah, then we're looking yeah. for some, some good, good, good scripts and we'd love to work with uh, Andrew Walkington again. You know, built up a good relationship with him. But uh, of course, well, you know, it all depends on availability. But I've had such a wonderful 2009. But yeah. um, I think after I finish this, I'm going to go away in a darkened room right. and uh, think about what to do in the future and spend some time with my two beautiful boys. Great. And just finally, a message perhaps for the young filmmakers who you've been working with. Uh, any sort of uh, final tip for, for them to succeed and maybe follow in your footsteps? Well, tip, it's all about attitude, really. It's all about application. It's all about listening to your, 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 your tutors and uh, um, getting on with each other, but just have a good positive attitude and uh, believe that one day you will achieve your success and uh, see how it goes. But most of all, enjoy every single minute of it because life is short. Todd, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck.